and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this early mm -hmm. Valentine's Day edition of our partnership with Natural Grocers. We have Kelly Andis, who's with us from one of the stores. She's the nutritional health coach there, and she is going to talk to us about why we should actually be doing ourselves a favor and eating plenty of good chocolate. And so I will turn <laughs> it over to her and Kelly, let you take it away. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me today. Um, always a fun topic to talk about chocolate. And so I hope you enjoy today's presentation. And just so you know, uh, well, my name is Kelly, like uh, Miss Claire introduced me. I have been working for natural grocers now for 25 years. And uh, I work at the store that's on uh, Wadsworth and Girton, one block uh, north of the 285 Hamden. And my store's phone number is 303-989-4866. And for attending today's presentation, uh, if you come in um, uh, on or before uh, Saturday, February 20th, uh, you can pick up a $5 coupon just for attending today's presentation. And you can either ask for me, my name is Kelly, or you can ask for my store manager, Austin, or my assistant store manager, Rachel, and they will make sure that you get a $5 coupon just for attending today's uh, class. So um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm, oh, and also one other thing, we offer free one-on-one -on -one phone coaching or virtual coaching sessions. Uh, due to COVID, we're uh, doing them over the phone or, or by computer, and you are welcome to sign up with a nutritional health coach in your area at whatever store is closest to you, and that is a free service that we offer our community, so please feel free to do that. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to turn my camera off because uh, I always have to laugh about the fact that I get so distracted by seeing my own face. So let me just turn that off and we will go ahead and get started with uh, Health by Chocolate, one of our favorite classes. So this class is not in intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate any disease. Dietary supplements and foods can interact with prescription medications. So if you are taking a prescription medication, become informed about the possible interactions. So some of the things that make a natural grocers unique and different in the health food store industry is the fact that we have a focus on nutrition, science-based nutrition education to the communities that we serve. We are also dedicated to the highest quality standards, everyday affordable pricing, supporting our local communities by doing outreach presentations and uh, those are always free to our community, and we're also dedicated to our great employees. Um, so uh, this class is normally a cooking demo that I would be doing in my store. And so uh, I, we're going to be going over the recipe at the end. Uh, I do recommend that at, when we get to that point, if you have a cell phone and you want to take pictures of the recipe that I'm going to pull up, I'm going to be going over that with you. But also you can reach out to me um, at my store. Uh, again, the number is 303-989-4866. And I'm happy to get you those recipes, the recipe for the cooking demo that we would be doing. Um, and, or you can reach out to Claire at the library and she will be able to get that to you as well. So um, we love chocolate and chocolate is a divine celestial drink, the sweat of the stars, the vital seed, divine nectar, the drink of the gods, Panacea of Universal Medicine. And that was um, a quote by Geronimo uh, Piperni. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He was a Spanish army surgeon in 1796. So the average American eats about 12 pounds of chocolate per year. Um, and 71 million pounds of chocolate is sold the week before Easter. 
48 million pounds during Valentine's week and 90 million pounds the week before Halloween. So it's very clear how much Americans love their chocolate. So um, human use was 5,000 to 15,000 years ago. Uh, the earliest known archeological evidence of cacao use was in a village in present day Honduras where pottery evidence use, uh, pottery evidence use dates back to 2000 BC. Uh, it has been used throughout history and prized for its medicinal and stimulant value. And just so you know, cocoa is a British slang term for cacao. So whether you call it cocoa or cacao, it's the same thing, just depending on where you come from. And I think it was very interesting that cacao was actually used as a standard currency in Mexico until 1887. And then in 1888, Milton Snavely Hershey uh, opened his first chocolate factory where he developed the Hershey bar. So cacao trees um, in 1753, uh, Carl, Carl von Linnaeus uh, named the cacao tree Theo Brahma uh, cacao, food of the gods. So it has a limited growing area and it requires a warm climate. And the mature trees can produce up to 50 fruits per year and each fruit contains 20 to 50 seeds and it takes about three to four high quality chocolate bars uh, can be made from each fruit. So the cacao tree is indigenous to Central and South America and it's also grown in West Africa and Southeast Asia and cacao trees can adapt to a large range of tropical conditions, but they must have warm temperatures to thrive. So 79 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius is ideal. So now we're gonna talk about some of the health benefits of chocolate. So first of all, chocolate contains high levels of flavonoids. And flavonoids are the plant pigments responsible for many of the health benefits given by fruits and medicinal plants. Uh, so one of the most beneficial groups of flavonoids found in chocolate is polyphenols. And those are similar to what you're gonna find in green tea, apples, red wine, pomegranate juice, and berries. So um, not only is uh, chocolate rich in these flavonoids, but factors within the chocolate somehow increase the absorption of these compounds. And it is actually thought that healthy gut bacteria is essential for converting polyphenols in chocolate into absorbable, usable forms for the body. So probiotics can help support the uh, healthy gut so that this can take place. And most flavonoids function in the body as free radical scavengers. Now, I do want to give a little bit of a caution here. And the reason for that is that chocolate is a common food allergen. So it can produce a stimulant effect and it can lead to feelings of nervousness and anxiety in sensitive people. It contains uh, compounds known as vasoactive amines that can lead to headaches. It, all, uh, it contains oxalic acid, a compound that can bind to calcium and lead to kidney stones. And it is also high in arginine, which is an amino acid required by the herpes virus for replication. So if you happen to be someone that tends to be prone to a herpes outbreak uh, and you want to enjoy chocolate, I would recommend balancing that with the amino acid called lysine. Lysine balances arginine. And since chocolate is high in arginine and that's the, what the virus thrives on, if you balance that out with lysine, you may find that you're actually able to enjoy a little bit of chocolate. So of course, um, we're gonna talk about these other wonderful benefits. First of all, a lot of people don't realize that chocolate is excellent for supporting the health of your brain. So it boosts memory, attention span, reaction time, and problem solving. And then of course, in, for your skin health, it improves skin tone and texture. And this is another side benefit. It may actually prevent UV damage. 
So as we're getting ready to go into uh, spring and summer, that's a, a wonderful addition. Uh, having some healthy dark chocolate uh, every day, a little square of that may actually uh, help your skin. Um, also, of course, dark chocolate, um, it supports a healthy uh, insulin response. And, but I want to point out that that's dark chocolate only, um, not milk chocolate. Milk chocolate will actually destabilize your insulin response. So you want to be mindful of that. And we're going to talk more about the benefits of eating uh, healthier chocolates. So with that being said, um, other benefits include cardiovascular. And uh, this is a passion of mine. I really like talking about heart health. And one of the things that studies have shown is that um, chocolate actually increases HDL cholesterol levels. And that is, um, HDL is the um, form of cholesterol that's considered to be the good form of cholesterol. But then another important thing is that it protects LDL cholesterol from oxidation. Now, LDL has been um, unfortunately labeled as the bad cholesterol. Maybe your doctor has told you that the HDL, the H stands for happy and the LDL, the L stands for lousy, but really the body produces both HDL and LDL and for good reason. And so I apologize. Let me just unplug my phone here. Sorry about that. I meant to do that before the uh, class started. So going back to this explanation, LDL is actually very important for protecting your memory and keeping you from getting infections. About the only time that LDL cholesterol becomes dangerous is when it becomes oxidized by free radicals. So when we eat foods like uh, fruits and vegetables and dark chocolate and green tea, uh, turmeric, uh, various things like that, like antioxidants like uh, beta carotene, sorry, beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E, um, all of those antioxidants help protect the LDL from that oxidative damage. So um, the other thing that it does is it promotes healthy endothelial function, and that is a thin layer of cells that line the interior of all blood vessels. And um, uh, the polyphenols in chocolate promote healthy levels of nitric oxide to support healthy blood pressure. So even, you know, having that small uh, square of dark chocolate every day um, is going to bring us um, many functions in our uh, healthy benefits for our heart. But I love the fact that it can support healthy blood pressure, and we all need that. And when you eat your chocolate, I want you to thoroughly enjoy it. And then another thing that's very important for heart health is the fact that um, it also supports inflammation modulation. So what that means is that chocolate can help create a healthy inflammatory response in the body. Most people have runaway inflammation. The standard American diet drives inflammation. That's the SAD diet. And of course, inflammation uh, drives disease. And so you, when we think about inflammation, think about cancer, heart attacks, uh, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease, or um, any itis condition like arthritis, dermatitis, um, all of those types of conditions are driven by inflammation. And so by eating dark chocolate, we can certainly modulate that response. So of course, the other thing that we want to talk about is um, that you want to choose your chocolate wisely. Quality matters. Uh, the health benefits from uh, the health benefits come from the cacao bean. So choose dark chocolate with at least a 70 or a greater percentage of cocoa or cacao. Um, added milk and sugar reduces the health benefits. And as a matter of fact, I, I don't know um, what age group everyone is in who is watching the presentation today. But when I was growing up, I'm, I'm 54 years old. So when I was growing up, I remember we were told to stay away from chocolate because it would cause acne. And um, since then, we've learned that 
high quality dark chocolate does not cause acne. What was probably causing acne when I was a kid was all the milk sugar, the milk um, chocolate with all the sugar um, and junk that was in it back then. And so we know better now that that's not the problem. Um, and also eliminate products containing artificial sugars, artificial flavors, and of course, highly processed vegetable oils. So artificial sugars and artificial flavors have no place in the human body. They're not good for anyone. As a matter of fact, artificial sugars can greatly hinder your gut microbiota. So your good bacteria, your probiotics can be damaged by artificial sugars. Not to mention um, those artificial sugars that are supposed to support diabetics um, actually can spike their insulin just as high as eating actual sugar. Artificial flavors have been known and colors, artificial colors as well, have been known to cause um, ADHD in children. And so they really have no place in the human body. And the other reason why highly processed vegetable oils are not welcome is because those are high in omega-6. And if we get too high of omega-6 rich vegetable oils in our diet, that's also going to drive inflammation. And like I was saying, inflammation is really the problem with um, pretty much every disease that we can experience. So, and then this is the case is that some products contain very little or no cacao at all. So some of the, we've got to talk about the dark side of chocolate. So some of the unfortunate things that are happening uh, to keep up with supply and demand uh, is the environmental effects where they're clearing the rainforest to make more and more room for cacao trees. And then of course, heavy use of pesticides and herbicides. Those are very, very damaging, not only to the environment, but also to us humans who consume the foods in which these are sprayed on. The other thing we must look at is human dignity. So many companies out there that are sold in more conventional stores, uh, those chocolate companies may be working in countries where they're using child labor forced slave labor, and of course, discrimination. So choose your chocolate wisely. You want to look for chocolate bars that contain uh, the label that says for, uh, fair trade certification. And what that does is it sets social standards and environmental standards. It protects prices paid to farmers. It prohibits child labor and forced labor and it prohibits discrimination and it protects the rights of wages um, and workers. And so that dark side of chocolate, the uh, industry th that I was talking about is like we were saying, the, um, the use of the pesticides and the herbicides. But I wanted to um, talk to you about this. So according to a research by Tulane University in 2010, 1.8 million children ages 5 to 17 were forced laborers on cocoa farms across the Ivory Coast in Ghana. 40% of these children were not enrolled in school and only 5% of them were paid to work. Hopefully this has gotten better by 2021 but this is something that we need to take very seriously because when we're um, seeing these types of um, cruel and inhumane practices, I mean, think about a little five-year-old being forced to work in um, a, a heavy, hard industry just to keep up with the, us wanting to eat our chocolate. So I uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, also, you can look for this certification, uh, Rainforest Alliance. And so what they're doing is they're working to keep forests standing. Uh, they are curbing cl climate change. They're protecting wildlife because when they um, take these forests out to pl plant more and more cacao trees to keep up with that supply and demand, then what they're doing is they're driving out the wildlife that would live there. So harming everything in, um, in a variety of ways. The other thing that the Rainforest Alliance is doing is it's alleviating poverty 
and it's transforming business practices. So we want to choose the Fair Trade and Rainforest Alliance uh, certified chocolate. And uh, if you don't see either of those on uh, your favorite product, let the company know that you won't buy their product until changes are made. And just remember that here at Natural Grocers, you don't have to worry about that because we are always 100% committed to high quality standards that we have been talking about. So you're, any chocolate in our store, you're gonna come in, you're gonna see these types of labels on our products. And companies that source cacao grown and harvested in a way that protects natural sources and human dignity tend to produce higher quality products for sure. So not so sweet. <laughs> so what we wanna do is we've gotta get people away from thinking that chocolate has to be this sweet, sweet treat. And I must admit growing up, we grew up with like Hershey bars and things like that. And of course those were delicious because you know they have sugar and sugar binds to opiate receptor sites in the brain. So therefore it triggers an addictive nature. And I remember maybe by the time I was a teenager of trying my first bite of dark chocolate. And at first I remember thinking, oh, I don't like this. You know, it was, it's got a bitterness to it. And of course, so it took me a while to get used to dark chocolate, but once I did, boy, you really can't go back to eating milk chocolate again because dark chocolate, because of that bitter taste, uh, one of the things that when you stimulate your bitter taste buds that happens in your body is it supports healthy digestion. So um, by that, what it does is it stimulates the liver to produce more bile. And then the bile gets sent to the gallbladder where it's stored and concentrated. And then when you eat fat, the gallbladder squeezes the bile into the intestines to emulsify the fat that you're eating. So by eating bitter foods, and the, the primary bitter foods that Americans consume uh, is going to be dark chocolate and coffee. But typically most people with coffee are gonna sweeten it up and kind of take away that bitter. Most people don't just drink black coffee. For those of you who do, I commend you. I think that's awesome. Um, and I like to put a little coconut milk in mine <laughs> and, and a little bit of stevia. I must say I grew up with sweet coffee. So it's kind of my little treat there that I get to have. But some of the things that you can do is you can mix a little unsweetened cocoa powder or raw cacao powder into a protein shake. Now the side benefit for this is that it can really help um, curb the appetite so that you don't uh, over you don't want to overeat. So cocoa has that nice benefit to it right there, but it needs to be the unsweetened kind. You can also add cocoa nibs to trail mix and nut butters or yogurt. And if you've never tried cocoa nibs, um, I would encourage you to try those. Now that is seriously dark chocolate. And um, that would be about the darkest that you can get. And it does require a little getting used to. So I would encourage you to uh, try that. The other thing you can do is you can try looking up recipes for a Mexican mole negro, and that's Mexico's national sauce. It's sweet and nutty, roasted, and can be used as a base to build a stew poured over meat or poultry. And of course it has a slightly bitter taste. Again, that's gonna improve the digestion of your, uh, help with the digestion in your food. Uh, you can also add unsweetened cocoa powder to red chili as well. So, um, so chocolate lovers rejoice. So what we wanna do is we want a small amount of dark chocolate or cocoa daily really does have a place in a healthy diet. I want people to understand that. So like we talked about earlier, we wanna choose chocolate that is at least 70% or higher. Uh, if you've never tried it, I encourage you to try 80 or even 85% to get the most health benefits um, that we have been talking about for brain, for skin, for heart health, uh, supporting that healthy blood pressure that we talked about. 
And so you select a piece of chocolate and place it on your tongue. And this, I gotta tell you, this is hard for me because um, you really want, uh, in other countries, this is how they do it. They, you don't wanna let it touch your teeth. You wanna just let it melt on your tongue and see what you notice. You know, really look at um, the sensations. And lately here at work, we've been learning about mindfulness and being present in the moment. So most of us definitely are mindful. In other words, our minds are full of the day, the stress, the bills, the errands, uh, working, raising kids, cleaning the house, running errands, all of that stuff that our mind is full of. And so what we wanna do is we wanna focus on being mindful and present in the moment. So um, by taking a little break in your day to enjoy a piece of chocolate and just really be present with it. Like I said, be uh, put it on your tongue, let it melt um, and just experience the wonderful effects of it. And just, you know, pay attention to what you notice with that. And so another thing before I move on to the recipe portion of this, um, I wanted to let you know that right now we are educating our customers on alpha lipoic acid, which is a supplement. It is a universal free radical scavenger and um, it crosses over into both fat and water soluble tissues of your body. And what it does is it recycles fat and water soluble antioxidants. And so, but like it'll recycle vitamin C and vitamin E and alpha lipoic acid supports healthy blood sugar, which is why I thought it would have a nice place in the, um, to talk about it when we're talking about something really lovely like chocolate. Um, and so you can do alpha lipoic acid to support brain health and then also liver health. So if we've been overindulging uh, during the holiday season and you need to get your blood sugar uh, more supported and you want to support detoxification and get your liver a little bit better shape, uh, alpha lipoic acid can definitely be supportive of that. And I recently learned that alpha lipoic acid is also very good for um, uh, detoxifying the body from heavy metals. So that is another um, thing that we are gonna be promoting uh, till the end of March. We have lots of good articles on it and I encourage you to come in. You can come in and get your $5 coupon for attending uh, as long as you pick up your coupon um, before um, August, uh, Feb August, February 20th, um, and use it in the store before February 20th, then you can uh, try getting alpha lipoic acid or some chocolate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move into, if we were doing this at my store in my demo kitchen, we would be doing this recipe in front of you. So again, if you have your cell phone and you wanna take a picture of the screen as we go through it, uh, that way you can make this on your own. It's fantastic. Or you can reach out to me or Claire at the library, at Bemis Library, and um, she will, one of us will get you this recipe. But right here, so we're going to start off. This is the recipe that I would normally be making. It's from Quick and Easy Paleo Comfort Foods by Julie and Charles Mayfield. And so as we can see, the ingredients are very simple. Uh, two cups of hazelnuts, um, 12 ounces of dark chocolate, and two table, uh, tablespoons of coconut manna or coconut butter. So that's all that's in it. And so when we go to the next slide, if you want to take another picture of this one, this is um, step one. So what we're doing is you're removing the hazel skin, uh, or the hazelnut skins, and this could be done by roasting the hazelnuts at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes, then wrapping them in a dish towel for five minutes to steam and then rub the nuts vigorously in the dish towel to remove as much of the skin as possible. 
Um, it, it's, uh, it is a little bit challenging. Personally, I don't mind the skin because it does give it a little bit more of that bitter flavor. So again, supporting our digestion. So if you wanna just try to get the majority of the skin off, this is how you do it. But if you can't get it all off, don't worry about it. So moving on to step two, that's where you pour the hazelnuts with the skin removed into a food processor. And you're gonna blend it for five to seven minutes until you've got hazelnut butter. And then step three, you wanna melt your uh, 12 ounces of dark chocolate. You can use a double boiler or make your own with a, a heat proof dish set over a pan of gently simmering water. Um, what I do, because I don't have a, do a double boiler, is I just use a metal dish um, that fits on top of a regular pot, uh, and then I'll have my water in the bottom, and I have that gently boiling, and um, you just keep stirring the chocolate until it melts. It works quite well, so you don't have to go out and buy any special equipment to make this. And then, the step four, you can add in the coconut manna or coconut butter and mix until combined. Now, some of the benefits of coconut are that it's a rich source of medium chain triglycerides, and those are sent straight to your liver where they're burned as energy. They also convert to ketones, which fuel your brain. So you get a lot of benefit out of either coconut manna or coconut butter. Uh, they're pretty similar. And the other thing that um, you get out of coconuts is that they're a rich source of caprylic acid and lauric acid, and those support the health of your immune system, which of course people are really looking for right now. And also this, uh, coconuts are one of the most thyroid friendly foods that you can put into the body. So this works really, really well. Plus it just tastes delicious. Step five, you're gonna pour the melted chocolate mixture into the hazelnut butter and blend until combined. So that's um, step five. And then moving on to step six, pour into a bowl and refrigerate. And then what you can do is serve with various tasty fruits. So if you wanted to do apple slices or banana slices, strawberries, anything like that would taste really, really good. Now, for those of you that maybe don't have a lot of time to deal with removing hazelnut skins, another thing is that you can do is you can just buy hazelnut butter that's already made. And, and then you don't have to make your own. So I just wanted to throw that out because I know not everyone has uh, all, uh, all the time in the world. So um, then of course, some of the books that we recommend um, like the quick and easy paleo comfort foods, paleo indulgences is one of my favorites. I always keep that one around for the holidays. Uh, that one is healthy gluten-free recipes. So they're grain-free, gluten-free, um, using healthier sweetener choices like honey and maple syrup, uh, stevia, those types of things. And then Practical Paleo is another one of my favorite books. And the reason I like that one is she gives 30-day meal plans designed to support different things like autoimmune conditions, digestive health, blood sugar, thyroid, cancer recovery, heart health, neurological health, all kinds of different things that that book um, gives you a guide to. And then paleo comfort foods is another good one. So the idea behind paleo is that it is gluten-free, grain-free way of eating and um, sticking to uh, primarily low carb vegetables, but you can certainly add in uh, higher carb vegetables. And then right now, maybe some of you are aware that Natural Grocers is doing our nationwide keto reset program. So coming up, uh, we just did week three, it's a four week series. We just did week three this past Wednesday, yesterday. Um, and if you did not get a chance to watch uh, the, the Keto Reset series, you can go to our website at naturalgrocers.com 
and you can watch the recordings. So you can catch up with all of that. And then various stores are doing support groups, keto reset support group sessions um, around the country. And so mine are being done on Saturday. So my week three presentation will be this Saturday, February 6th. And you do have to sign up for that. You can either call me at the store and I'm happy to sign you up for it. We're doing it virtually. Or you can go to our website, again, naturalgrocers.com and you can sign, sign up for a support group session at a time um, and day that works for you. Mine are on Saturdays at one o'clock and I only have two left. So I'll be doing February 6th and my last one will be on February 13th. So you are always welcome to join up for those. So with that being said, that's the end of the presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. And I wanted to see if anyone had any questions. Um, this is Carol. Um, hi, Carol. Hi, which um, vegetable oils qualify as highly processed? Oh, sure. That is excellent question. So the ones you want to really stay away from are corn oil, soybean oil, um, canola oil. Uh, and, and another reason for staying away from these three types of oils is that those are also three of the top genetically engineered crops in America, soy, corn, and canola. And so when we're eating those, especially if they're not organic, then you're getting a hefty dose of genetic GMOs in your um, oils. And those are going to drive that inflammation. So and which oils should we be looking for? Like coconut oil? Yes. So coconut oil is excellent. We use a lot of that for the keto program. Um, olive oil and um, tallow, lard, those are some of the fats that we have been told for the last 60 years that they're bad for us and that we have to stay away from them. But new, uh, it's not even new, but um, re current research is showing that we never, those fats were never bad for us. So we've been told that butter was bad for us, uh, bacon grease, you know, lard, coconut, tallow, all of that was going to clog our arteries and cause heart attacks. And that is absolutely not true. So as a nutritionist, I eat close to a pound of butter a week and I use a lot of coconut oil. Uh, butter and coconut oil are my two main oils for um, higher heat cooking. You know, if I'm, uh, or if I'm doing eggs, I'll do them in butter or coconut oil. And um, I'm also a firm believer in saving bacon grease. So every time I cook bacon, I have a little container that I put my bacon grease in and I use the bacon grease to cook vegetables in. It's not only delicious, but bacon is actually a big source of monounsaturated fats and those actually support burning belly fat. So well, Julia Child would be proud with the butter. <laughs> yes, 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 totally. And Kelly, we had somebody who, um, had some connections issues and wasn't in at the very beginning and wanted to be reminded of which store you are at so that she can come and visit sure. you and get that coupon. Yeah, sure. So my store, and by the way, you do have to come to my store since I'm the one giving the presentation. Um, if you went to another store, they would be like, what, who are you? <laughs> but um, I will let my store managers know. So my store is at 3333 South Wadsworth Boulevard in Lakewood. And so easy to remember, 3333 South Wadsworth in Lakewood. And that's the store at Wadsworth and Girton, one block north of 285. And my store's phone number is 303-989-4866. And uh, please come in and use your coupon by February 20th, you can pick it up and use it the same day that you come in to pick it up. And I had a follow-up question on Carol's question. Yes. I really can't tolerate the taste of coconut. Uh, Is refined coconut oil, does it still have the same health benefits or should I be picking a different oil to use? You know, um, I 
We only sell one brand of, did you say refined? Yes. So I've seen yeah. like you guys have the spectrum and then right. there was a new one in like a squeeze pouch that I saw the last time I was in. You know, Claire, I am so sorry. I'm not really sure okay. if the refining process um, takes away any of the nutrients, but that's a good question. And I'll look into that and um, get back to you. Let me write that down here real yeah. quick. The, the packaging just says that it's a steam refining process and, you know, basically just gets rid of the smell and the taste, but <laughs> we know what packaging claims are. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the fact, there we go, I've got it written down so that I can research that and get back to you. Um, the fact that we carry it tells me that it must still have nutritional value because as you know, here at Natural Grocers, um, our standards are so incredibly high uh, that we want to be very, very careful about what we bring in. And we were recently voted into the top healthiest grocery store in the country. And so we're very, very proud of that. So I'm going to look into that and I will get back to you on that. Thank you. Sure. Were there any other, other questions work? and feel free to type your questions into chat if you don't want to unmute and ask them and I will keep an eye on that and ask those questions for you. And then if they're in case anyone's typing, uh, Claire, I think our next one, oh, uh, our next one is coming up. Do you have that in front of you, Claire? <laughs> If not, somewhere. don't worry about it. Somewhere, somewhere on my desk, I've got it. Let me, let me look. Yeah. I know we had we had challenges finding the actual time for that. That's right. Um, yeah, we can figure that out later. I just yeah, yes, I know we were going to do the um, like healthy cleaning. Oh, and, um, but I can't remember what the date is that we settled on because we were having <laughs> conflicts on the several we talked about. So. That's right. Um, you know what? I believe it was creating a healthy home and we're actually going to be doing yes. that on April 22nd, Earth Day. That's what it was. Spot yes. on. Yes. So, all right. Well, I, if there were no other questions, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to spend a little time with me virtually today. Um, I'm very, very grateful for all of you that attended. And again, if there's any questions, just chime right in or type it in. Absolutely. And also if this was way too much information to absorb at once. Like I said, this will be live on our YouTube channel. I have now figured out how to get it into the appropriate playlist. So when you go to the Bemis Library YouTube channel, there is a natural grocer's playlist that has all of the sessions that, that Kelly and that Luke have hosted with us. So you can always go back and refresh your memory with another view of that. Yeah, and Luke is my friend. So, yep. and did you know that he recently transferred to our Kipling and Coal Mine store? I did. He told me we just had a, a session with him. He and Rose co-hosted. And so they let me know that he moved over there, but he was still technically in Littleton. So. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So hey, he's he's now my, my new partner in crime because he's only five miles away from me. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the cool side of town, right? Yeah, yeah, right. All the cool kids are in Littleton and Lakeway, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. And like thank Kelly said, for reach doing out. It. Absolutely. We are so glad to do it. Um, reach thank out. You. Let us know what wonderful chocolate concoctions you come up with now that you not only have permission, but encouragement to go eat good <laughs> chocolate and enjoy your month of chocolate. And we will look forward to seeing you at future programs. Thank All you. All right. Thank you.